The COVID-19 pandemic has reinforced the importance of processing sensitive data securely and at scale. In a world where analyzing data is increasingly necessary to deal with complex challenges, questions are rightly asked about how it is used. Individuals want to know what happens to their information, and those responsible for processing personal data need to understand how they can protect the information in their care. Anonymization refers to the process of removing identifiable information from datasets so that the people described in the data cannot reasonably be re-identified. Anonymization is useful because it allows organizations to work with data derived from individuals without putting the privacy of those individuals at risk. The challenge with anonymization is that it's hard to get right, and the consequences of getting it wrong can be serious. To cite a famous example, a graduate student was once able to use anonymized hospital data from Massachusetts to send the governor of Massachusetts his own health records. Since the term anonymization may convey a false sense of security by suggesting that data is impossible to re-identify, we recommend that organizations use the term de-identification instead. As with anonymous data, de-identified data has been stripped of names and other direct identifiers like address or dates of birth. Unlike anonymized data, de-identified data is subject to the same legal protections as identifiable data. This acknowledges the real risk of re-identification. Tracing de-identified or anonymized data back to the individual it describes. In providing software for customers that handle highly sensitive data, like the U.S. National Institute of Health, we've implemented frameworks and technology to help customers reduce re-identification risks. In our experience, re-identification risks should be addressed at two levels, the data itself and the circumstances in which it's used. Some questions to ask are, how sensitive is the data? How easy is it to re-identify the data and what happens if it's joined with other data? There are several techniques to modify data to prevent re-identification, such as generalization, reducing the granularity of information like converting date of birth to age or age range, aggregation, grouping data about individuals together and continuing analysis at the aggregate level, dynamic minimization, showing only parts of the data depending on the need or role of the user. There are many well-known techniques for reducing re-identifiability of a static dataset, but our approach aims to calculate risk in a complex, dynamic system. For example, the world in which people use data to make decisions. Some questions to ask are, how many users will have access to this data? How will this change over time? How much data can users access? What other data can they access? Are there clear data governance policies in place? And how well does the average user understand them? Does the platform enforce these policies? Are datasets within the platform clearly labeled and described so that data governance and operational users can quickly understand their sensitivity, intended use, and the applicable policy protections? Protecting privacy when using data must be a top priority when developing new technologies. Data-driven research and decision-making can greatly improve health, safety, and more, but these must not come at a disproportionate cost to privacy. Organizations using innovative technologies must act in accordance with the reasonable expectations of the people whose data they process. Regulation and best practices must evolve along with these technologies. This requires constant engagement with civil society, communities, and the individuals concerned. At Palantir, we consider protecting data and privacy a continuous process and hold that value as central to our product design.